the trolley when I came in at the end of the game, so obviously he was concerned enough, but he's up and walking around. Um, not quite himself yet, but he's uh, he's up and about and wondering what's going on. Glad you was up and about. In terms of the match itself, what are your what are your initial thoughts of? A, I suppose it was a topsy turvy game, particularly in that last quarter. Uh, yeah, it had a, a little bit of everything. Um, uh, the unexpected was popping up at times, wasn't it? And uh, uh, and that was a game in the end. But uh, I mean, in the call light today, I thought South Africa deserved to, to, to win the game. So congratulations to them. Um, the first half, uh, I thought we was off. Um, I thought we'd give away access for them to be able to play their game defensively. We was a bit um, passive, uh, um, certainly for <coughs> the first try. Um, but then the story of the game for me, uh, after some words at half-time, was I thought it was courageous at times how we defended and got ourselves back into the game. Um, in fact, you know, it's the it's it's the makeup of this team, and you know the the, the history would say that um, even with the, the the type of performance in the first half, we we hung on in there and we don't go away. You know, you, there's plenty of teams that would have um, uh, been under under the pump in the first half like that and got uh, got got the the game run away with in, in the second half and uh, we didn't we, we we stayed in the fight and could have would have should have at times you know with um, some decisions that uh, rightly or wrongly didn't go our way. Peter, what, what did you make of those decisions? Do you feel a bit hard done by TMO calls? Um, well, it's not for me to say, is it? But. Um, uh, I saw quite a few of them live, and I had a, a, um, a dubious thought about about it. But anyway, that's life, isn't it? You know, this uh, uh, we'll go through the right channels and make sure that we um, do things properly, as far as that's concerned. I mean, you, you'll, you'll make of you'll make of it what you want. Uh, we we have to go through the right channels. Um, uh, unlucky, lucky. Uh, that's the game as well. It was just um, James Lowe looked like somebody who's been practicing his outfield work on the boundary, keeping the ball in play. Do you? And it, it, so it went against him, I suppose. What, what did you think? He said. Well, I just, I just wondered, like, do you back him in those situations? The, the fact that he was trying to keep the ball alive and it backfired on him. Uh, well, I'm more disappointed with the, it was, it was a special play by Colby uh, to, to to chase that ball, and. It's one of the reasons why they won the World Cup with him chasing down the kicker in, in France. But we were slack, not backing James up. You'll make your own decision of whether he still had the ball in his right hand or whether the ball hit him as he threw the ball back into back into into field and his foot was in touch. Um, that's for us all to debate. Andy, does that, does that stuff hurt more? That say that example or some of the stuff you mentioned first half it doesn't seem to be technical or tactical. Does that hurt you guys more? Uh, no, Mary, it, it is what it is. That's that's the sport. It's it's difficult to referee. You just want consistency. That's all, you know. And uh, you know, sometimes it goes for you, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you know, I mean, you'll make your own decision on the on the, on the Craig thing. Uh, I mean, I mean, on your own performance, sorry. Sorry. The fact that you didn't win the scraps there off James's touch or in the first half, they were good passes. Yeah, you, you've got to make your own luck as well, haven't you? By by covering all bases and. Uh, we know that they're a team that fights for those scraps, and we need to be better in that instance. Yeah. The second, the, the one, you get to a point where you're within a score. They brought a new ten on. He makes a mistake, and you compound the wrong word, but James makes a <coughs> mistake as the ball's heading towards what would have been a scrum against 14 men on halfway. Is that is that a mental error? Is that given the amount of work you put into your mental mentality and all sorts of stuff? Is it disappointing and? I I wouldn't say yeah it's an error it's an error and 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 I've no doubt that James will put his hand up to that I actually thought you know it feels gold isn't it really I mean some of the kickoffs in the first half as well uh Craig caught and uh, and we ended up 20 meters out from from our own line uh if you've got the courage to let it bounce it probably goes dead but at the same time if it bounces up 
you look stupid, you know. So we don't know what could have happened either way, really. Peter, can I just ask you, what was that like playing? What was your sense of the game? Because you, you hung on in there for a long time when there was a lot of ball and they were going wide. Wider than we've ever seen them before. Yeah, look, it was an intense test match, I think Andy to allude to it, we, we were chasing the game a little bit, certainly in the first half, uh, defensively, um, you know, with, their, with, with the way they played a bit deeper and a bit wider, um, you know, some of our, our I think, this decision making around our, our defensive calling probably wasn't good enough, um, and then some, look, some of our tackling wasn't good enough either, so, um, oh look, it was a Usually competitive test match, intense game, as you'd expect. But um, you know we were off in a, uh, a few areas. I remember in Auckland, you were interviewed on the pitch after that first test, and you were convinced that you could bounce back and win, win a series. And, um, do you feel the same way now? I mean, you can't win the series now, but do you feel this team has it within it to bounce back and beat the match? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. This team has a huge amount of character, um, and don't get me wrong, it's a tough place to come and, and play rugby. Of course, it is. Um, but I think we've all the football and uh, you know technical, tactical side. But we just we need to make sure that we deliver it on the pitch. Okay. Just welcome back to Peter. Um, what do you think you have to do going into the Durban test to draw? What is are there things that you would change? Uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, uh, I suppose the main thing is 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 attacking the game the way that we want to to, to do it, and uh, not being desperate uh, next week just because we've lost this week. You know, because if if that creeps in, then you become even more ill-disciplined, and I think discipline costs us. I know that the, the the penalty count wasn't outrageous, but it's it's the way that we. Um, uh, put pressure on ourselves and relieve pressure for them uh, is what we 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 need to uh, address. And you know, there's some great learnings from the first half that we that we put right in, in the second half. I think we was still um, not clinical enough when we had chances. Certainly um, on the Springboks line, you've got to convert in big games like this. There's no doubt about that. And. You know, if you if you put things like that right, we were still in the game. So that says to you that we've got a chance. Last question for the live section. Would you say is Dan Sheen a, a doubt for next week? That's a knee injury. I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. There's a few that um, that we need to assess over the next 24 hours. Okay. Um, for Mondays.